Hello and welcome to the GMBN podcast. This week we have our very own Martin Ashton, a bona fide legend of trials mountain biking. <laughs> I don't know how that one sits with you. I guess you'd probably shrug it off. Sits in well. Style. Oh, yeah, nice. Sits well. I feel, I feel like a legend of mountain biking. Well, a bona fide extreme legend. <laughs> We're just going to turn it up. Um, <laughs> what, until I'm uncomfortable? <laughs> Okay. You know my tactics so well. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about trials riding and its sort of place in the wider context of bit mountain biking or off-road yeah. riding, perhaps. I don't know what would be the best way to say it. Um, and I want to start with kind of your story a bit and how you got into it. So born in, Ash- uh, in Ascot in mid-1970s. Yeah. How did you, did you, did you come through like a moto Charles background or was it always bikes? Um, my dad was, a, did scrambles back in oh, the day. Yes. Um, we, we grew up in Windsor um, and on a weekend when he was younger, he used to go and ride mo- what is now motocross, but then was scrambles. Um, and so there was a history of motorcycling in our family. And then I've got two older brothers and as they got to an age where they became uh, how shall I say, less interested in school. He yeah. tried to help make them concentrate their mind with motorbikes, um, which didn't work. We yeah. just concentrated <laughs> on motorbikes. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so we, we, my eldest brother, Lee, he started riding motorcycle trials. And, that, and my dad got him into trials because he presumed it was a safer form of motorcycling than motocross, which is obviously high speed, high danger. And he didn't want to put take him down that route, which is a shame because I think Lee would have done better at that. He was a bit throttle happy. Um, and then my middle brother, Andy, he started. And he sort of did a little bit better in the sport because he had Lee's experience to live off. And then I came last. And about nine, I would have said it about 1988, I, I started riding motorcycle trials when I was about 11. No, earlier than that, maybe 1987. Um, I started riding motorbikes and, and competing. And, and then, Yeah, and was it always competition focused? Was that the... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, always. Yeah, motorcycle trials, every weekend we'd be going off to some event, competing, um, yeah, in, in a classic trial scenario, you know, like you laps of a group of sections, yeah. probably be about 10, 15 sections of, in a lap, and then you would go to each section, you ride through it, try and, and not put your feet down. It's yeah. kind of easy way to think of it, if you're, trying to, if you're struggling to picture what trials is in your mind, it's a little bit like a golf course. You go to a hole and then you try to get through that hole with the least amount of points dropped. Yeah. And then the person at the end of the day with the least amount of points wins. That's kind of the game. Yeah, no, that's a, yeah. a very good way to describe it. Yeah, yeah. And imagine those kind of, it sounds like kind of family, family weekends away. It sounds like yeah. quite a precious sort of memory. Yeah, oh, I mean, t- trials is such an amazing sport. It really is family orientated. Um, you have lots of the, the parents marking the scores on the sections. It's a lot of like, <laughs> you know, if, if, like, yeah, people don't get involved. It doesn't happen. You know, yeah. you've got someone who's got to put the course together, the Clark course, and that's usually someone's volunteers, some dad yeah. or mum has said, I'll do it. And um, yeah, and it's going on all around the country and all around the world every weekend. It's one of those sports you don't see very often, but it's out there happening yeah, yeah. every single weekend in lots of places. And was uh, there, um, what kind of age gap is between you and your brothers? Uh, well, my oldest brother's five years older than me. Okay. Uh, then Andy's in the middle. He's three years older than me. So those two, those two guys are closer together, but... Um, but I was quite clearly the best trials rider. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna and say, I just want that on the record. Okay. Just want that on the record. Noted. Yeah. Best. Easily, easily the best out of Martin <laughs> Lee and Andy. And, easily. Um, and when did it progress to bikes then? Is it always a... I, it... Went to, I went to a um, motorcycle show, like an end of year show, where they were demonstrating all the bikes for the following year. All the new bikes were coming out. Um, and there was a guy there doing a demonstration on a 20-inch trials bike, a guy called Stuart Matthews, and he was the British champion. Um, so this is like a Monty 20-inch trials bike with a big fat tyre um, on the rear, the rear of the bike. One gear, really light gear, in, designed for trials. And I used to practice on my rally burner in the week when I wasn't allowed to ride my motorbike, and I would pretend it was a motorbike. Um, and then seeing this push bike that looked like a little motorbike yeah. with no engine, I just loved it. I loved that big fat back tire. Um, and I, I just thought, God, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. I could put, basically, it would be like having my motorbike all week long. <laughs> um, and the guy riding it, Stuart, it was a lovely guy. I'm not sure I understand. Sorry, Siri doesn't Siri. understand. Well, Siri, it's I'm not, not just I'm not, about you. Yeah, I'm not sure why Siri's getting involved, to be honest. Sorry I was about gonna that. Say, she didn't kick up when you were saying you're the best of the, yeah. of the siblings. She so. never does. <laughs> she never does. She never backs me up. Um, yeah, so I, and, and this guy, Stuart, he's, um, he's a policeman and he, he, 
he's a really lovely guy, but he's very tall, uh, six foot five, I think he is. So on this little 20 inch trials bike, he looked kind of weird, but the stuff he could do on it just blew my mind. It was stuff I'd never seen hopping on the back wheel, side ops, just technical trials abilities that were just out of this world. And I was just like, I've got to do that. Yeah. And the next week I was at a, a push bike trials event, riding on my rally burner, trying to be one of these guys. Uh, I quite quickly during that day realised that the rally burner was not the bike <laughs> for that. Big BMX gearing. Not the competitive Totally, place. totally slick tyres where all I'd done is do skids on it and <laughs> had to swap the back tyre for the front. And, you know, and it, it was just a disaster. But I did OK on it, even though it wasn't the right bike. And in that, that event, there was a trials bike for sale at the end. Someone was trying to sell off their bike and my my dad was like, let's get it, you know, and then... And that was it. I was off. I, about three weeks later, I was riding for the British team no at way. the World Championships. And how yeah. old are you at this point? I would have been 18. Yeah. Yeah. So my motorcycle trials career was just getting going and I was just starting to grow. I was I was always really small when I was at school and um, I'd struggled on the motorbikes, to be honest, all through my kind of like schoolboy riding career. And then as I got to sort of like 17, 18, I had like a growth spurt. I was suddenly stronger. I could control the bike. And then... It kind of all got derailed by push bites because unknowingly I'd been practicing this sport after school every day for the last five years. And I'd got to a level that was sort of national level without even knowing it. And I suddenly went there and was getting such big results. It just pulled me away from motorbikes and yeah. off I went. And, and that, that turned into mountain biking a couple of years after that. Similar story to <clears throat> maybe Aaron Gwynn or... Elliot Jackson. Very similar, yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. You know, it's just like, you know. <laughs> I'm careful. I'm just, you know, buffering yeah. your ego. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? Like like you said, unintentionally practicing mm. and being like, oh, actually, a lot of this Didn't is transferable. Yeah, yeah. Do you think if, um, if that chance meeting with bicycle trials hadn't yeah. occurred, do you think you would have ploughed on with the, um, the off-road off motos? Um. I think I would, but I don't think I would have achieved the same kind of results I did in push bike trials. Mm. I, I, I think other than that, I love it. I don't think my trials career was going anywhere, anywhere was anywhere more than it was. I was riding at like kind of like just below national level and really loving it. Yeah. And I think that's where I would have probably stayed and <laughs> carried on riding every weekend for the rest of my life. I and love not- love motorcycle trials, but I was just super lucky that somehow this thing with push bike trials had come together without me knowing and then mountain biking was just kicking off mm. and suddenly I'd got onto push bikes and realised there was push bike competitions and I went along to a mountain bike event and suddenly it was not only a push bike competition it was a really cool one yeah. because you know sad to say that push bike trials wasn't very cool and it was still a bit like motorbike trials family orientated weekend it was it was the same thing yes. but on push bikes and very quiet yeah which motorbikes obviously has got this fantastic, um, you know, visceral feeling. Yes, it's like totally. the engine, and suddenly you're in the field and everyone's quiet, and there's just brakes going, <laughs> and it's like not got quite the same feeling. I went to a mountain bike event. There's people cheering. It's colourful. There's all these bikes that are so many different technological advances coming in you think the early 90s how quickly mountain biking was changing mm. and suddenly like i think it was around 92 93 i sort of went to that first event and was like oh my god what's this yeah. and fortunately for me everyone who was riding trials at that point in mountain biking was us sh- <laughs> and i and myself and another rider Thank Martin Hawes, praise the lord yeah praise the lord that no one had actually got any good at trials so me and my friend Martin Hawes, we came over from push bike trials and absolutely wiped the floor of everyone because <laughs> everyone in the uk was utter rubbish at that point they were great riders brilliant people but yeah. they didn't have any trials riding yeah. ability and did you settle straight on did you ever experiment with other forms of bike competition did you ever uh i rode mountain but i rode a bit of cross-country mountain bike and a mm. bit of downhill and i could do both all right because i had pretty good fitness and from riding motorcycle trials you get a really good sense of what downhill mountain bikes like because you're yes. using similar travel systems um in the bikes and in between sections you're not supposed to but in motorcycle trials in between sections you go really really fast uh, um between trees very similar to how you would on a mountain mount, downhill mountain bike so i could do both but i just didn't have the love for it that i do have for trials um yeah. 
there's something in tr trials riding that really resonates with me and and I've always come back to it you and know the way you're talking it reminds me of actually my own discovery of, of bikes mm. and how it feels suddenly like the light switch has been yeah. turned on yeah, oh yeah. my god this is this is why didn't anyone tell me before <laughs> yeah, that's like always the feeling I had yeah but we've seen you know the downhill cross country trail riding change drastically yeah. in in the interim how much has trials courses changed do you oh, think they're yeah. largely similar or a lot higher consequence or trials is a really weird sport because it's it's a sport that you you can't really say you're doing i'm a trials rider until you've got quite good at it Yes. There's a period where you're just not really a trials rider yet, but you're hoping to become one. Aspirational. Uh, yeah. Um, whereas downhill mountain bike, you can basically sit on a downhill mountain bike and roll down a hill and ta-da, you're doing it. Yeah. Right? And and then cross-country uh, mountain biking is very similar. You know, you, you get out on the course and ride that bike, get tired. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Um, trials riding, there's, there's a good five or six techniques that unless you've learned to quite a good standard you're not really going to ever be able to compete or really take part in the sport. So, um, it sounds similar to playing the violin or something. Yes. You know, like until you get, there's so many fundamental skills. Yeah, so it's a hard sport, which means the number of people doing it is always going to be quite small because it's very difficult and it's very technical. Um, and that has never really changed. Um, that's always been the case it's been a small sport because it's difficult and many of the riders it, turning up a crap yeah, well is that what you're saying <laughs> i feel i've been harsh i feel i've been what i, I mean no it's the truth they were, they, were, they were crap sorry jez jez avery was the rider in question actually we he was a really famous rider in the early 90s in the uk and he was in all the magazines and he was the trials rider but really to be fair to jez he wasn't a trials rider he was a stunt rider Oh, okay. And trials riding in mountain biking at that point had kind of come under that, you know, the stunt riders, the, that kind of thing, you know. And um, and Jez was doing that, but when you when you came across from competition trials and then you rode against a stunt guy, he was never really going to have much of a yes, chance because yeah. it's a really technically difficult technically sport. Difficult sport. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, it went our way. <laughs> it went our way. But Jez's still going, man. I mean, I'm I'm sat here in a wheelchair. Jez is he's still a professional stunt rider. So, so cool. who's winning? <laughs> I think he's doing okay. Yeah. I think he's doing all right. And um, do you think that Charles has? You know, I mean, it's always it's always been in parallel to mountain mm. biking. Do you think it is its own sport? Oh yeah, I mean, it, a huge it's shared, shared skills. Like I said, it's a weird sport, isn't it? Because if you want to name five of the most famous mountain bikers in history, mm. right? Two of them, at least, are going to be trials, trials riders. riders. Yeah. Right? And that is not representative of the percentage of people who do trials in mountain bike sports because we are we are not at that. There's there's maybe, I don't know how many trials riders there are, but it's not many. Well, even and, now that Fabio... Well, yeah, I mean, I'd say three. three. I'd say three. So, so you, so if you stop a, stop a mountain biker at... Ye Crankworks and say, name some famous mountain bikers. Yeah. It's, yeah, maybe even three. And, and that is weird, but there's something about trials that just is fascinating to watch. So it really lends itself to media. Um, and it has always done that. And I became a professional mountain biker, not because I was winning trials events, um, which I was, but no one cared because it's trials. Yeah. No one cares. <laughs> um, but I, I was doing a sport that really worked for magazines. Yes. And, and and then as my career progressed, it really worked for live shows and then it really worked for video. And then again, later on, really worked for live shows again because the videos kind of played off and meant everyone wanted to watch your show because yes. they'd seen your videos. So it it's just got a really you know, a really fascinating thing to, to just stand and watch and go, how can someone do that with a bike? Mm. Um, and I still, looking at modern trials riders, I'm at that stage now as well. As so I'll watch a trials rider now and go, how is he doing that with yeah. a bike? Because it's, you know, like any sport, since I stopped really competing, the level has just continued to rise and rise and rise. And now when I watch it, I'm as stunned as anyone else. I'm like, how oh, Jesus, how are they riding over yeah. those obstacles? I mean, when I watch trials as somebody with a very limited trials skill set, yeah. the thing that 
obviously the precision's amazing, you know, a lot of these things. But the explosive power. Yeah. Like someone like Danny. Yeah. I mean, to be able, I just think that, and the core strength. Yeah. Is, yeah. you know, and, and speaking to him about it very briefly, mm. it just sounds like he just loves riding his bike. And that's yeah. where it comes from. And I think yeah. that's such an organic thing. I think it's just actually quite a... Danny's a freak. I mean, we've got. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's he's. Thank God he found our sport. But he's one of those people. He would have been good at whatever he did. Mm. But he's just very talented. But his passion for riding push bikes has meant he's been able to just deliver something really special. And the the kid is a genius. I yes. mean, he's he really is. He's got a an amazing eye for creating something where us idiots can understand it in a way and enjoy it and we've got no idea how hard it is what he's doing he makes it look so beautiful and puts it in such incredible places but the the bravery and the vision he's had to have to put that stuff together is remarkable and, yeah, and I, I think you know you do yourself a disservice there because think of the animal tour and how that probably connected a whole generation of you know riders to yeah i mean uh, to I, things in, using your imagination and being like an area that it's probably, you know, not that much bigger than the size of a swimming pool. Oh, and this yeah. much riding we're going to get in it. Yeah. The the live shows that I did and, I mean, that whole idea kind of come from what Hans Ray's career was and how that developed. And then there was people like myself and Peter Krauss and Libor Karras and Op and lots of riders that, trials riders, you know, all around the world, trying to do a similar thing, but following very much in the footsteps of Hans Ray. Um, I think the difference with Danny is that he was just that touch point for cycling when YouTube meant something to us suddenly a lot of people. Mm. It had been around and and cycling hadn't really utilised it yet. Then then Danny did. And then suddenly everyone realised how important a good bike riding video could be. Yes. Um, not only for a rider's career, but for a brand. Um, and, and just look how the sport's... In, in cycling have changed since it's dramatically changed because suddenly these riders these individuals have just got in they're incredibly powerful in the sport they're not just people scrapping around hoping to get a sponsorship deal they're what the brands need to buy yes like they need them assets else they're nowhere yeah um and and danny and danny would say it's just timing it was just one of those things yeah but it worked but fortunately danny is very very good at it and has been proven to be very good at it ever since he's not yet put out a video where we went eh. yeah he's no, no duds that's all right <laughs> it's like that was good yeah wow that was good and fabio widmer has done a, an incredible job to even come along and have something to put forward i mean there's mm. so many good trials riders and 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 Danny still manages to put out a great video. Um, what, what I think is amazing about a lot of Danny's stuff is there's a lot of you know it, what you know what funds industry. Well, it's mm. it's marketing budgets, it's products, etc. But Danny can take something that to some people could come across quite stale mm. and make you like desperate to watch anything he's in, be it advertising or just sort of... Oh, does, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's Always blurred the lines because you don't know what's advert and what's not anymore. <laughs> and I mean, I mean and essentially, anything he does on a bike now is an advert because mm. his time has been bought. Yes. He, is, he, is, he is out. If, if he gets on a bike, someone's going to film it. Yeah. Someone's going to use it. Um, but his enthusiasm for riding just has not dropped. Mm. Um, and he's great. He's a great, great rider. I mean, here's the shocker for, for, for people who don't know trials that well. Danny's not very good. <laughs> Well, I, I've heard he's, him say something similar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Danny, I mean, Danny will be the first to say it. He's a fantastic at making bike videos. He's got a pretty good bunny op on him. He's got quite a lot of power and stuff. Compare Danny to a competing trials rider, a, tr a competition trials rider. It's, it's worlds apart. Really? It worlds apart. Is that apart. just inconsistency? Just uh, precision technical ability actual <laughs> skills Danny some skills Danny wouldn't even be able to do yeah Tri competition trials is much more like a martial art yes it, it, there are techniques that you have to perfect and then you have to put them in the situations and use them under incredible amounts of pressure mm. um in places where you know you're gonna be exposed where you're you're gonna people are gonna be able to tell whether you can pull it off or not and and then they're gonna write a score down yeah you're gonna know 
and you're going to find out five times per lap whether you're doing it okay. Yes, it's totally. High, high pressure. It's in your face. It's really difficult. And it isn't what you see Danny Mac doing. Yeah. That's something else. That's street trials. I suppose, yeah, kind of competition trials is maybe something like Joe Satriani. Incredibly technical guitar playing that doesn't very have that strong similar. of a melody. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. Very similar. It's one of those things you can watch and it's fascinating, but is it beautiful? Mm. Don't know. It's I mean, sometimes it is. Um, there's there's just incredible riders out there, but it's one of those things, if you go too far deep into it, you're suddenly only ever going to be a trials rider because the moment you ride a mountain bike, and you could see it a little bit when you see Danny do a bit of trail riding as well. You could definitely see it when I rode, rode trail. A trials rider becomes quite stiff. Their bridge suddenly becomes quite solid because their muscle memory and their usage of the handlebars has become trials orientated. And then suddenly you put them out on the trail and they haven't got that kind of Look at Josh Bryson, someone like that. It's yeah. just, it's it's fluid. Yes. And a trials rider suddenly finds they get very very good, very very good at trials, but suddenly their ability to be fluid on a mountain bike diminishes, Diminu- yeah. and they become quite stiff. Um, so you can you can tend to spot them out on the trail, and if you see a comp trials rider on a mountain bike, it can be ugly. <laughs> just saying, because it can be ugly. They're brilliant at trials, but something yeah. that we've spoken about before. I, I would be the... one of those people, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm very much in that. <laughs> very Man, that boy's stiff. <laughs> yeah, not good. Um, something we've spoken about before on the race podcasts is I heard, you know, for a fair few years now, the Swiss, the way they do cross-country racing in Switzerland, is they seed the juniors on a trials course on the Saturday. Uh, right. And then that decides your starting order on the Sunday. Brilliant. Yeah. So, and it's got the same bike, same kit, yeah. and there's nothing too yeah. extreme. You know, should trials riding be compulsory? Or do you think it should be at least very recommended? We're kind of going through this journey with mountain biking where, similar to skiing, people are like, well, just get lessons, mm. you know. And obviously that's great. Yeah. But the amount of money and time people invest on perfecting their setup, Yeah. do you think actually being able to back wheel hop and actually wheel placement and stuff like that. Um, well, it's interesting because back back in the early days of UK, I don't know if it was a global thing, but definitely back in the U, your sort of early UK mountain bike events, trials was part of it. Mm. You did used to do trials on the Saturday and cross country on the Sunday morning and then a downhill race. And, you know, it was all one thing. Um, so that was in the past something that happened. It's a brilliant idea to do that. I think that's a fan. I didn't know that, but that's a fantastic idea. I think being able to hop on the back wheel and stuff like that is not that useful. Like hopping on the back wheel is a trials move, right? But out on the trail, you aren't really going to use that kind yeah. of that kind of skill. Learning to balance, ride along narrow things, um, narrow objects, uh, balance moves. Um, controlled pedal maneuvers where you're starting with a deliberate f- like right foot forward pedaling three times so you'll definitely know where the front wheel will be at that point those kind of ideas that are in trials riding they're incredibly useful out on the trail and you learn that stuff by trying to work your way through a bit of trail like how am i going to do this bit of trail and then like th- that's the weird thing about trials not many people can say they're trials riders, but actually we're all doing it. Yes, maybe, You've all yeah. done trials. Yeah. We've all looked at an obstacle out on the trail and gone, can I get around that corner? Or can I get up that little bit? Or can I ride over that log? That's trials. Yeah. It's can I yes, totally. fill in gap? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. That's trials yeah. riding. Um, and, and that's a brilliant skill to learn in, in mountain biking. So any youngster that's out there and they're messing around out the front of their house trying to ride up a curb or get up a curb and turn very tightly and get back down it, that's trials riding and it will help you when you're out on the trail 100%. Um, but you can go too far into the dark art and you've got to be careful. Yes. It'll grab you. But, you know, that, <laughs> what you are saying there about balance, when we're on the Dirt Shed show, I think maybe 85, 90% of fails we see is people going out the front door. Yes. It's two slough drops, a pedal kick, yeah. something like that would help knowing yeah, yeah, and yeah. actually be able to move your wheels independently one, of one yeah, another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it does seem that there's something about mountain bikers. We love going out the front door. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's... <laughs> the you'll never the see that in trials. It's, it's you'll never see a trials competition. Someone just go, oh, my God, well, they've just gone out the front like... 
You know what I mean? Like mm. in the same way. I don't know. I mean, what would be a common trials crash? That's a good question, actually. What would be a common trials? Well, yeah, I mean, going out the back door is quite common on mountain bike trials or, or trials in general because you're hopping on the back wheel and sometimes you go off a big drop and you land and sometimes you're not strong enough to hold the back brake and you loop out the back. Um, so, yeah, maybe going out the back door is quite a common trials idea. But, I mean, the front being high is very common in trials. You know, most to get up something, you're going to lift the front up high. Going off a drop, the front wheel starts in the air. So you tend to notice that a trials rider will start to keep the front wheel very high. If you see them go off a jump, they'll dry, jump front high. That starts looking very stiff. Um, and and that's something you have to be careful of if you're moving from trials in the mountain biking. But also, if you're starting to practice a jump, going in thinking, I'll keep the front high is not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, so it can work. But I mean, yeah, I, I, there's so much about trials that would is only really ever beneficial to mountain biking unless you, you know, you've sort of come from trials into mountain biking and then there's habits that are hard to get rid of. But if you're, if you're a mountain bike rider, doing a little bit of trials is going to improve your riding by... Could I put a percentage on it? I think you can. I think, I think <laughs> if, you, if you spent... An hour a week, and that doesn't have to be one hour in total, in bits. If you spent an hour a week messing around doing a bit of trials, your mountain biking out on the trail, real riding, would improve by 30%. Cool. At least. I wanted to say more then. I wanted to go more, Henry, but I, I held <laughs> you... it back. Because I, I, I don't want to mislead anyone, but at least 30%. That's a lot. Well, you know, GCN did that cool, um, how fit can you get a week? I think it was four hours training. I think Dan Lloyd did it. Right, yes. Now, I'm somebody yeah. that will put my hands up. Mm. You know, I've, the type, type of trials I ride are steeper, higher speed. Yeah. Um, very natural, admittedly, so they're not like bike park stuff. But yeah. with long wheelbase mountain bikes, a lot of the stability I have as a rider mm. comes from speed or comes from wheelbase. Yeah. It doesn't actually come from trial skills. Yeah. We could set me on like a three-month course. Henry, you know, 20 minutes a night. Yeah. And set a trials course, the same course. Yeah. And be like, you know, that could be a cool little project. I mean, yeah, if you rode trials that much, that's a lot of trials. If you rode trials, a yeah, day, yeah. It's on the way to work, a bit of a detour. Yeah, I mean. Coach Ashton, you up for the challenge? I lo anyone wants to learn some trials, I'm up for it. I think this, I think we I, could. I, we I'm, could go I'm with up this. for that for sure. Yeah. I mean, if it, it, like trials can be so beneficial and it's so easy because it, it because it is so many different things riding down some steps is mountain biking but also if you ride down them very slowly and making a slight turn yeah. as you go down that's sort of moving into a trials idea yes. because you're creating some rules of the course um and that will pay off dividends when you're out on a steep trail and you're trying to turn on a rooty slippery yeah. um bit of course uh so it's it's just a really easy way to break your experiences that you're going to have out on a trail down and just perfect them um, and ride them over and over again in a very small space. Great thing about trials is you can ride it. I feel like I'm really trying to sell trials. Yeah, now. no, I think you're doing a good job. I'm going to I go. I feel like I'm really trying to sell it. First thing I do is uh, yeah. hacking my seat tube off my mountain bike <laughs> and getting involved. Yeah, that's one thing I would say. Put the seat down low because, <laughs> man, that but can to come back to bite you. About being able to do it anywhere. Yeah. Road bike party. Yeah. Shame, Where did eh? that idea come from? Um... Taking a road uh, bike no, and no, being let me have, Now, be really honest, right? I definitely saw... Um, I was at a point in my career where I was doing lots and lots of shows. I was doing really well. I had great sponsorship um, and probably was one of the people you would say is a trials rider, you know, that oh, guy. Totally, you yeah. know, yeah. And, um, and then Danny sort of pushed this new route on YouTube and suddenly everything that I was doing was not reaching that many people. It suddenly was like obvious that, wow, I can do five shows a day with a thousand people watching. It's mm. nothing. Yes. It's just nothing. It's not, I'm not reaching anyone. Um, and I realized I needed a platform on YouTube. I, and I, so I, I really sat down and thought a lot about what am I going to do on YouTube? Because in all honesty, I just couldn't really compete with the video Danny had put out. It was his original video it's is in, still, still insanely good. I mean, it's coming up to ten years. Yeah, and it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing video. Um, and I, I was like, man, I can't, I can't do anything other than try and maybe copy it a bit. 
I didn't want to do that. Um, and I think the the kind of messing about is much more my my persona. Yeah. I, you know, I like to have a bit of fun. <laughs> and I don't know where really know where the idea came from originally, but um, actually, someone who works in this building, Pete Stottard, yeah, um, he he wanted to promote a mountain bike, a road bike event, and he asked me to do a little clip um, doing a wheelie on a road bike. Uh, because there was going to be mountain bikes at this event you wanted to promote. Um, so I said to him, well, I can do a bit more on a wheelie, having never ridden a road bike, didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> and I went and did a little promo video for him for this event where I did a few stunts on a road bike. Um, but while I was doing that, I thought, man, there is, I can do a lot on this bike. I started to get kind of good on it. And I was thinking like, wow, I could, oh, it's just a bike. Doesn't really, yes. it's no different. Um and I started to think, wow, I could really go nuts on this. And I said it to a few people and they were like, no, eh, you've kind of done it. And this little promo video had gone out and it got a bit of interest, but nothing like what Road Bike Party ended up getting. And I, I was like, no, I'm doing it. I'm going to go nuts. And I, got, I just thought if I can get the best, best bike and then go, if I could just do pretty much everything I can do on a bike, on that bike, surely someone's going to watch it. And I was, I was praying to get like 100,000 views. That was my number. It was like, if I could reach 100,000 people, mm. man, I'd be amazed. And I, we did it in like the first hour. Yeah. It went mad. I, yeah, it I, was I, crazy. I, 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 I've never experienced anything like it in my life and probably never will again. But yeah. it, was, it was a hell of a thing to be part of because... Yeah, it's just one of those things. And I, I just kind of managed to get my little foot in the door on the YouTube train of bike videos at but that it did time go huge and it still goes you know sometimes yeah, it still goes yeah. seems to go through these bubbles of i get it recommended yeah and, it's you know. it's a weird it's a weird little video and and weirdly it, it it it's probably tracked an awful lot better even than the views suggest now because at the time um a million views now is not the same value as a million views yes. 10 years ago you know that a million views then was like it's unbelievably massive yeah. um and and these days lots of things get lots of views so it's it's very different now but yeah i mean it it was a it was a hell of an experience but it was just one of those things that just came i thought oh, i'll give it a go and then it all clicked into place and then i genuinely basically rode around doing trials on a road bike too much and got <laughs> and got like actually i can kind of do everything on this bike i can do on my normal bike because that seems you know. to be an attitude that chris Ackrig has taken as well yeah. I mean, some of the, I don't know if you saw some of the things he puts out. And oh, mate, I'm, I'm you know, always very, very good friends yeah. with Chris. And, and he is a genius rider. And he's always been out to ride anything. I mean, mm. anything. He could have done Road Bike Party 10 times as good. I mean, he, he's incredible, you know. And, and it, I, thank God, just got the idea <laughs> in first. But he, yeah, I mean, he can ride, um, <laughs> man, you know. So I thought of it first. Yeah, I thought of it first. Too late now. <laughs> but he, um, yeah, he's an amazing rider. There's loads of riders out there from trials that can do some incredible stuff. But Chris Ackrig is a, a gift. He's just got a gift. Yes, you know, yeah, just an absolute gift. And um, in competition trials, he was incredible. And then and and he managed to move it over to mountain bikes as well. And just you know, has done some amazing things. Yeah, on bikes. every I'm. I yeah. would put me in the realms of super fan in terms of yeah. oh, he's incredible. his videos. And, he, that he's, and he's one of those riders I've ridden with him so many times. Sometimes he'll do something and you'll just be like, how did it, did you do that? And he'll yes. be like, I don't know. And just, oh yeah, we're not, we're, we can <laughs> like, talk an hour yeah, about just, some of the things. Yeah, he just, he won't even know how he did it. He yeah. just did it. And he didn't even think, he, did, he can just do it without thinking, mm. but he probably can't recreate it. It'll just, it's that. Literally, that, yeah. when you're out riding with him and it's real, it's not like a video part or something like that. He's just, I try that. And he'll do it and he'll look at you back surprised like, wow, how did that work? <laughs> and I'm like, well, dude, I have got no idea. <laughs> and if you haven't, we're in trouble. Yeah. Incredible guy. Incredible guy. No, it's definitely worth checking out. And um, I mean, I think it's been definitely an insightful chat about trials. Yes, I enjoyed it's, it. It puts, it's put some fire in my belly to go and um, fall over in a car park somewhere. 20 minutes a night. 20 minutes a night. what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I feel almost like bedtime reading being back in school. Um, but no, thank you very much for your Mate, time and, pleasure. and talking about uh, the nuances of trials. As always, this is available on any kind of podcast streaming service of your choice, be it Spotify, etc. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you next week. Bye.